when I look out my window. Menace. Hello, traders. Gary Wagner with the Gold Forecast here. It's approximately 9 a.m. in Honolulu, Hawaii, Wednesday, the 18th day of May, and this is the Daily Report. We currently have gold trading higher this morning, about $7 higher. It is off of the highs of last night, in which we made a brief stab above the $1,500 mark. We are currently looking at a 612-minute candlestick chart that has been converted into a Henkin or a average chart. The idea with the average chart, of course, it is a lagging indicator, but it gives us an idea when we have defined trends, the strength of the trend, as well as pivot points. Now, I've also coupled this with the moving average convergence divergence, the MACD, because what we have found in our research is that as we move from one wave to the other, one indication, one confirming factor is that the MACD, the MACD, will typically follow suit, although lagging, but will follow suit behind. By using this shorter sequence, meaning you are breaking up your day approximately into three basic bars, it gives us a little bit more information to go with. So with that in mind, when we look at a close-up of the most recent trading activity through the eyes of the Henkin and the MACD, I think you'll see that we do have some interesting, interesting information, a little bit too early to tell, but I believe that if we are going to see that pivot point, these particular technical studies will help us confirm and collectively allow us to have a high probability that what we're witnessing is a true pivot point or a true change in direction. When we look at this chart itself, the two things that are going to stick out, of course, is that after a long protracted downtrend, and this downtrend is from about 1530 all the way down to, I believe our low was uh, 71, 1471 the other day. We were running, except for these two particular time cycles here, we were running pretty much straight red or pretty much correction bearish all the way down. As you can see, it does have an uncanny ability, although a lagging indicator, to show us the strength of a trend as well as the overall pivot points. And the pivot points, and we've talked about this before, but it's always worth noting, as the market comes down, typically what you will get is the, the candle size will strengthen. You're not getting that here because you have small body candles, they strengthen at the bottom, which I found very interesting. But these pivot points that you'll get will typically be capped by a very, very small bodied Henkin candle or even a doji. And you can see that here as well as here. The other thing is, of course, the change in color, which we get here. As you can see, you get that absolute change in color as direction changes. Now, here's what I am finding most interesting this morning, and that is when we look at the MACD, when we do our daily charts, it's not going to cross yet. These are a shorter term chart and therefore more sensitive. But you can see, although we haven't crossed, you can see that these two averages are coming together and that's what we're looking for. Are they moving apart? Are they coming together? Because that's really what's showing us that pivot point. The cross or the point in which you actually see these markets cross, that's the indication that you have had a wave change. Now, if you notice, it really lags behind even the Henkin. You get your sell signal, so to speak, or your cross here, but on the Henkin chart, you got that quite a bit earlier than that. So it's going to lag behind. And you'll notice that it always does lag behind. So that when we look at this marketplace right now, you can see our pivotal or our turning green candle, which came in right here, and then we look at the distance or the space between that 
And the fact that we now have this moving average convergence divergence, these lines begin to move together, the signal and the fact that we would watch them cross, that would be a really strong confirmation, in my opinion, that we in fact have weathered the correction and exited the correction. In other words, that would be very, very strong technical information that we're probably going to move back into our impulse wave. Of course, this is our master daily chart in which we look at our primary Elliott wave count as well as our channel lines and, and indications of current trend. Let me go ahead and blow that up for us. And the one thing that I noticed is when I looked at the charts this morning was that if we take a look at this one lower channel line, this channel line here, you can see that that has been a really, really strong channel line in terms of being able to show us a support area. And you can see that on each of these last two lower lows that we made, we did get that market just touching up against that particular channel line. That's the first thing that I find interesting. The second thing that I am noting is that if we're looking for a potential completion of this correction, and traders, we're going to need more confirmation than that. We absolutely at this point have our A, B, and if this is going to be the conclusion of our C, then the original assumption I had that the correction we would witness because this A wave was so I believe severe that I felt that we probably had hit our low in the marketplace itself if in fact this proves to be the low and we've got a ways to go before I am comfortable in saying that we will have in fact had a almost flat but a, a truncated flat correction in which you had a standard A, a standard B, but your C was shorter and not going to a new low. As I said, that's something that we're going to have to see because this market could easily move back up and then give us one more kind of move to the downside. That would, in fact, bring back the idea that I have been looking at of a possible triangle or pennant correction. And you can see where that idea came from. When we look at the angles within this marketplace itself, the upward trend and our resistance, it's quite easy to see that we have a market that is in terms of the range, that range is compressing, and we have had points in which the marketplace itself would reach resistance and move back down to support. That's your basic pennant. I think that what we're witnessing at this point is somewhat of a hybrid of both of them. And realize when we are looking at this market real time in real time data during real market activity, we have to be able to be flexible so that as new information comes into the market, as the trading range changes, as the price action dictates, we can honestly and openly be able to run an analysis and try to keep as many assumptions aside and look at the data as raw data and then bring those fundamental assumptions in and see whether they fit or not. But you have to start with the real data. In any case, we do have a marketplace that is well up off those lows of yesterday, that 1471. When we look at this marketplace also, we see the possibility of the market itself having a termination of the correction. But as I said, it's a little bit early to tell, but it has been my belief that we're either at or very near the completion of our wave four. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow for another daily update and review. Bye-bye. Many sights to see And when I look in my window 
so many different people to be that it's strange. 